The man leading the FBI's investigation into Hillary Clinton's use of a personal email server and Russian interference in the 2016 election testified before Congress this week. Agent Peter Strzok, the personification of the righteous left, thinking they know better than the rest of us, was a composite of pompous, arrogant, indignant, sarcastic, smug, condescending, defiant, and unapologetic. Are you objecting to the question? And if so, please state your objection. Mr. Chairman, two things. One, I do not believe I am here under subpoena. I believe I am here voluntarily. Second, I will not, based on direction of the FBI to me, based on that, I will not answer that question. Because it goes to matters which are related to the ongoing investigations being undertaken by the special Mr. counsel's Strzok, office. Mr. Strzok, you have not stated a l valid legal basis for not responding to a question directed to you by a member of the United States House of Representatives, and you are overruled. Point of order, Mr. Chairman. You're Strzok seems to share Cardinal Comey's affectation about being a selfless servant of the people, even though he seems to simultaneously hold us all in contempt. Struck is also the personification of the deep state itself, where fascism rules, where people in power don't care what you think, but instead decide they know better. They know what's right, and then they implement it. But no worries, Struck isn't biased. He says so himself. After months of investigations, there's simply no evidence of bias in my professional actions. For me, it was one of the most stunning, don't believe your lying eyes moments I've ever seen. His own text exchanges betray his denial. He and his mistress, Lisa Page, call Donald Trump an effing idiot, loathsome, a bigot, an enormous D, blank, 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 awful, abysmal, a disaster. The irony here is that if you want to show bias, you would simply use his words. And for any of you who still don't believe your lying ears, take a listen to this. Ten days before the investigation began, which the department you work for says nothing was done before July 31st, you said Trump is a disaster. I have no idea how destabilizing his presidency would be. It's between July 31st and August 8th, how many interviews did you conduct related to the alleged collusion between Russia and the Trump campaign? I'm asking for a number. I haven't gotten to the names. How many people had you, had you interviewed? The counsel of the FBI, based on the special counsel's equities, have directed me not to answer any <coughs> questions about the ongoing investigation into Russian attempts to interfere. So so he's directed not to answer any questions by counsel for the FBI. So why is this important? Why would it be important to show the investigation began before the FBI said it did? Why? Because nothing happened to even begin an investigation. They made up a date and they made up a reason. The Democrats in Congress knew the danger zone they were in and desperately tried to use every excuse to end the questions. And so pandemonium broke out in the House of Representatives. He has said that he's been instructed by the FBI not to answer the question. Point of order, Mr. Chairman. Your Chairman, Mr. Chairman, is it not appropriate to also interject the attorney-client privilege, which cannot be overridden uh, and is a the, rule of the House to the, the extent that Gentle witnesses have suspend. the right to an attorney-client privilege in this House. Mr. And that is what this witness is uh, asserting, attorney-client privilege, Mr. and he has been Strzok. advised not Mr. to answer the, the question. The gentlewoman will suspend. And it went downhill from there. Mr. You, Chairman, please. Have you, have you Mr. Known, Chairman, this is an intolerable you. harassment what of the witness. What is wrong with that? You need your medication. The free-for-all in that hearing room was a sight to behold. But more than that, it was a microcosm 
of what the left has done when they want to shut down the right. The pent-up rage and the pandemonium was an example of how angry the left is. And while the Republicans conducted themselves in a genteel manner, the Democrats, claiming parliamentary points of order, blew their collective gasket. So Strzok arrogantly claims he's following FBI protocol. They told him not to say anything. But six hours later, he's shown yet again to be a liar and is allowed to answer the question that goes to the heart of the basis for this absurd investigation into Donald Trump's alleged connection with Russia. And when given the green light, here's Strzok's answer. Agent Strzok, between July 31st, 2016 and August 6th, 2016, how many witness interviews did you conduct as part of the Russia... Trump campaign alleged collusion investigation. I don't recall, and I'd have to check the case file. We waited all that time for that answer? Yes, sir. That's eerily similar to what you said a couple hours ago. And if that isn't enough, the text, quote, I want to believe the path you threw out for consideration in Andy's office, that there's no way he gets elected. But I'm afraid we can't take that risk. It's like an insurance policy in the unlikely event you die before you're 40. So Strzok wasn't trying to prevent Trump from winning. What he was doing was even worse. He was talking about having a plan to effectively disenfranchise the voters who elected Trump should Trump win. Forget democracy, forget the people. Those voters whom Strzok doesn't like are idiots. He said so himself in a text to his mistress. If his candidate of choice didn't win, the one he helped avoid criminal liability, he was going to abuse the power we entrusted him to ensure that it didn't matter. If the unthinkable were to happen, his insurance policy would help deal with it. The insurance policy, my friends, is the Russia collusion investigation. ...by the Department of Justice and the Federal Bureau of Investigation in 2016 and 2017. I am specifically directing you to answer the question in response to our subpoena, notwithstanding your objection. Point of order, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Strzok, please be advised that you can either comply with the committee's directive to answer the question or refuse to do so, the latter of which will place you at risk of a contempt citation and potential criminal liability. Point of do, do order. Do you understand that? Point of order, Mr. The, Chairman. The question is directed to the witness. And I have a point of order before he answers the question. The, the, the point of order is not well taken until... You don't know what the point of order is. You can't say it's not well the, taken. The point of order, the, the, the witness will answer the question. Mr. Chairman, I, have, I raise my point of order and I insist on it. What is the point of order? The United States Attorney's Manual instructs department personnel not to respond to questions about the existence of an ongoing investigation or comment on its nature or progress. In a letter to Congressman John Linder in 2000, referred to as the Linder letter, the department made this policy explicitly applicable to requests from Congress. Quote, although Congress has a clearly legitimate interest in determining how the department enforces statutes, Congressional inquiries during the pendency of a matter pose an inherent threat to the integrity of the department's law enforcement and litigation functions, unquote. Therefore, the, chairman, the question being directed at the, at the witness is out of order. The witness's declination to answer it as against the instructions of the FBI pursuant to FBI policy, which is necessary so as not to allow us to subvert an ongoing criminal investigation, he is right, the and he should not answer the question. The gentleman has not stated a valid I point of order. The ruling nonetheless, in the chair in that case. nonetheless, the United States Supreme Court has recognized that it is unquestionably the duty of all citizens to cooperate with the Congress in its efforts to obtain the facts needed for intelligent legislative action. It is their unremitting obligation to respect the dignity of the Congress and its committees and to testify fully with respect to matters within the province of proper investigation. Mr. Chairman, I, the, the, I will 
Mr. Chairman, you know, or we all know, that if we were to ask a question of a witness about a military secret, if we were to ask him, how does the H-bomb work, he could not answer that Gentleman question. This is the same thing. Stated, that is a classification issue, not an issue of whether or not this is a valid question for which— I appeal the ruling of the chair. He's not there, it's not a point of order. He's ruled that it's not a point of order. That, that, is, that is not a ruling. Mr. Strzok? Mr. Chairman, I insist on my point of order, and I insist on Mr. Strzok. appealing the ruling of the chair. Mr. Strzok, knowing the advice that point I have order, given Point of order, Mr. Chairman. Point of order. I believe there's a point of order that's been raised, and you've ruled we have a right now to answer Mr. Nadler's. It is not a appeal. valid point of order. The and chair I has already already on, on, that on that question, because you don't. On that ruling. Point of order, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Strzok. Mr. Chairman, I appeal the ruling of the chair that you have just made. On that, on, the, on whether the you have my, not stated a valid point of and order, and that is your ruling, and that, I appeal it. That is not an appealable point of order. I yes, it is, Mr. Chairman. Appealing the ruling of the chair is exactly what he's requesting. He's appealing it. That requires a vote to either sustain it or overrule it. The gentleman from New York has not cited a rule of the House that is being violated. Therefore, it is not a point of order. And That's I your appeal ruling. That you ruling of the chair, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, is it not appropriate to also interject the attorney-client privilege, which cannot be overridden, uh, and is a the, rule of the house to the, the extent that witnesses have suspend. the right to an attorney-client privilege in this house? Mr. And that is what this witness is. Uh, asserting attorney-client privilege, Mr. and he has been Strzok, advised not Mr. to answer the, the question. The gentleman will suspend. The gentleman has not raised the attorney-client privilege. He has said that he's been instructed by the FBI not to answer the question. Now, by lawyers, he knows. He knows the advice I have just given him. If he would like, I'll restate it. But knowing this, will you answer the committee's question as directed, or do you refuse to answer the committee's question? And I point of parliamentary on the ruling Mr. of the Chairman. chair that point my of parliamentary order inquiry. was not in order. Point of parliamentary inquiry, Mr. Chairman. The, the, the gentleman from South Carolina has the time. A parliamentary inquiry is not in order during the gentleman's time. The chair is instructing the witness to answer the question, and the question to you is, Mr. Chairman, will you answer the committee's question as directed, or do you refuse to answer the committee's question? Mr. Chairman, I move to adjourn. Second. You're not recognized for that purpose. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I think you have no choice but to recognize such a motion. I, I do not have to. Are you just going to make up rules as we go along? Is that the, 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 the motion is not in order during the time controlled by the gentleman from South Carolina. I appeal the, that ruling of the chair. The, Mr. Strzok, <laughs> will Mr. you chairman, answer? I appeal your ruling of the chair that my motion to adjourn is not in order. The gentleman is not in order. That may be, but I appeal your ruling. The gentleman is not recognized. Take back over your time and fire away. Knowing this, Will you answer the committee's question as directed, or do you refuse to answer the committee's question? Mr. Chairman, as you know, counsel for the FBI has directed me not to answer questions about the ongoing investigation. As you also know, counsel for the FBI is sitting here behind me. May I consult with them? You may consult with your own counsel. Not with but I may not consult with the only, FBI's counsel? Only with your own counsel. Mr. Chairman, there's no basis for that. He can consult <laughs> with the FBI counsel. He's an FBI the employee. The gentleman is not recognized. And the chairman is not being proper. The chairman is being proper. The witness can't be directed not to confer with his attorney. He, the, the, the FBI is not his attorney. His attorney is he's seated an behind an him. If he wishes he's an to employee of the FBI, Mr. He's already chairman. done. He may do so. And his attorney may consult with the FBI attorney? <laughs> Isn't the privilege that of the FBI, and shouldn't the FBI counsel be um, solicited on that point. Mr. Chairman, 
My counsel has reiterated that counsel for the FBI has directed that I may not answer that question. Mr. Strzok, in a moment we will continue with the hearing, but based on your refusal to answer the question, at the conclusion of the day we will be recessing the hearing and you will be subject to recall to allow the committee to consider proceeding with a contempt citation. A point of order, Mr. Chairman, will the committee also consider contempt for Mr. Bannon, who refused to answer Mr. Gowdy's questions when he was actually under subpoena? Is that, that is not too? a proper point of order in this hearing. Parliamentary inquiry. Mr. Gowdy, do you remember Parliamentary that? inquiry. The, the time that? is controlled by the gentleman from Parliamentary South inquiry. A parliamentary inquiry is Mr. not an order when your the gentleman from, subpoena, from South Gowdy. Carolina controls the time. Agent Strzok, um, just so the record's clear,